To this day, a lot of people don't realize Call of Duty World at War is the first game in the Black Ops saga, obviously because it's not called Black Ops. But this game established a ton of things that would be staples in later Black Ops games. Characters like Reznov were first introduced here. This is where the debut of zombies came from, where a lot of the lore and universe would be established. And there were some iconic multiplayer maps that would become staples that would be brought back in later Call of Duty games over the years. If you use the computer in Call of Duty Black Ops, you can actually get intel information about Alex Mason's father, who apparently during World War II earned a purple heart during the Battle of Macon Atoll, the first level of Call of Duty World at War. In Black Ops' campaign level where you're in the Pentagon, or on the Zombies level 5, you can see pictures on the wall referencing World at War. There's one of Sergeant Roebuck, one of the main characters, a picture from the multiplayer level Black Cats, which is where you're fighting in the Battle of Midway, and the plaque even mentions the Battle of Peleliu. On the World at War level, Burn em Out, during this level, it's stated that the temperature is 100 115 degrees, which is a reference to the memoir The Old Breed by Eugene Sledge, where he shared his experiences during the Battle of Peleliu and how temperatures went up to 115 degrees. But also, whether it was intentional or not, this was the first Black Ops use of 115, which played a massive role in Zombies' storyline, but also is just a number that appears all over the place in the Black Ops saga, besides just being related to zombies. In the very first Zombies map, first introduced in Call of Duty World at War, the text Ascend from Darkness is written on the walls by this staircase. Ascend from Darkness would be a major story element in the Zombies universe, but also a main story element in Black Ops as a part of Reznov's escape plan from Vorkuta. There's also references across Call of Duty Black Ops 1 suggesting that Alex Mason is a candidate for the Manchurian Project, which not only was a psychological film, but also has ties to MK Ultra. This thing goes really deep with some of the references and little nods and sometimes it seems like they go nowhere and then sometimes it seems like they're all connected together in this giant like web. Throughout the main campaign of Call of Duty World at War there are 13 different hidden death cards that you can find and locate. They're essentially like intel or other little hidden collectibles throughout the campaign except each death card can act as a modifier changing up certain elements of the game making the game pretty crazy and unique like adding zombies to the main campaign mode. There are 13 different death cards they can be found here 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 here, 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 and here. On the second level of World at War's campaign, if you jump in these pools on the beach over here on kind of the left side of where you first start the level, you can activate an Easter egg that causes these statue dogs to come up with the ray gun inside of it, and you can use the ray gun for the rest of the level. This marks the first appearance of the ray gun in Call of Duty. On the first level of the campaign, there's a Marine here that gets attacked, and his name is Private Ryan, and if you stop the enemy from killing him, you can get an achievement where it's a reference to the movie Saving Private Ryan, where in this achievement, you saved Private Ryan. In one of the most popular sniper levels of all of Call of Duty, Vendetta, the level starts players off inside of a fountain surrounded by a bunch of dead soldiers. There's a lot of imagery and homage in this level directed at the film Enemy at the Gates. Actually, this film was a huge influence for a lot of World at War's story. Besides just the fountain scene, there's the stuff with the mannequins, which are also seen here in the campaign level. Also in this level, if you know scope one of the soldiers, Reznov will comment on it. Apparently if you look at these soldiers the right way, the bloodstains resemble the Grim Reaper. I don't know if I see it. Eh, I kind of see it. On the second level you can see that this vehicle is named Jiglin Julie. In both the campaign and the multiplayer level where you go to the asylum, you can hear weird whispering sounds in the background that just sounds a little unsettling. Also in the campaign section, there are these drawings of figures and blood, which is also kind of creepy. In World at War, your actions towards the surrendering soldiers at the end of this campaign level will actually influence how Chernov documents his experiences in the war in his journal. He'll either call you a hero or think of you as like a ruthless soldier. On the last level of the campaign, you can shoot the Panzerhost at this giant eagle and it will collapse into the room and Reznov will even comment on it. Castle is one of the iconic multiplayer levels introduced in Call of Duty World at War and was brought back years later in Vanguard, but in Vanguard there's a radio playing Morse code that translates to S-G-A-U-S, maybe standing for Sledgehammer Games Australia, who of course worked on Vanguard. On the campaign level Macon, there's a German youth knife in a fish apparently here. I never knew about this one. On the level Subpens, you can actually find this doghouse that's labeled Dan's. 
doghouse. Probably a reference to a developer or something. On the multiplayer map hangar, if you go down this ladder here and you are in this prisoner room or something. If you listen carefully, you can hear some creepy torture sounds. I don't know how else to explain it, but it does sound rather ghostly. And of course, this game was the first Call of Duty game to ever feature zombies, which actually was just a post-credits easter egg mode that you could only access by beating the campaign. It wouldn't be until a title update later on where they added zombies as its dedicated playlist mode outside of being attached to the campaign. So in itself, it was its own easter egg just existing. Also, of course, there's a classic if you stab the knife by the random box, it'll play some music. On Verrucht, which is of course that asylum multiplayer level but turned into a zombie map, even creepier, if you listen inside of this you can hear a baby crying. If you go to over here and hold down the action button you can hear a drill and a screaming which is kind of terrifying. In the power room, mind you this is the first zombies game to have players need to turn on the power, you can hear some numbers repeated in this deep electrified tone. And these numbers are actually the secret numbers from the television series Lost. To this day, these numbers still show up in so many different franchises and easter eggs. Also on Verrucht, if you flush the toilet three times, you can activate the first ever sung zombies easter egg, Elena Segman's Lullaby for a Dead Man. Over on Shinonuma, the next zombie map to release, if you knocked this hanging man down with grenades and then if you stand on top of him, it will cause the entire game to reset no matter what round you're on and the zombies starting back at round one will be much stronger than they were before. In Call of Duty Zombies Mobile, it was like an iPhone adaptation of the World at War maps that used to be available back in the day. There was this whole extra arc on the Shinonuma map where you dug up Peter's grave from the story, but the story's not canon on the phone. So. But yeah, there was a little easter egg there. Also, if you go to this phone hidden away in Shinonuma, you can activate the second easter egg song, The One. Another music easter egg. I like this. Also, if you walk in the swamp back to this corner, you can see the giant meteorite that might be causing some of the zombie outbreaks out here. I think the meteorite was linked with the 115 element in the lore. There's even a reference with writing on the walls to the Tunguska event, which was a real world event that happened in 1908 when what is believed to have been a giant asteroid or comet crashed near the Tunguska River, which is near modern-day Krasnoyarsk Krai, Russia. The blast was massive, flattening an estimated 80 million trees over an 830 square meter area of forest. There's still a ton of mystery regarding this and a ton of conspiracy theories to this day, so it's interesting that they have this little reference here in Shinonuma and of course a little meteorite hidden over here in the corner. And then there's the final zombies map in World at War, Dare there's hidden radios around the map that give more story to the creation of zombies. There's three secret tubes that you can activate that will cause the Beauty of Annihilation secret track to play, which is just a banger. If you throw a monkey into the furnace, it'll start screaming and you can hear Samantha yell some stuff at you. If you shoot a pack-a-punched weapon over at this little button over here in the distance, you can activate a secret easter egg called the fly trap, and essentially these things fly in the air and you have to go find these clues. It's pretty much just a giant distraction and doesn't really result in anything, but it's still a really cool hidden thing as you have to run around and find like a teddy bear with juggernaug and a sickle. In some versions of this map, as this map was brought back multiple times over the years, there's JD written on the wall, which likely is a reference to community manager Josh Olin, who worked at Treyarch, but that's still unconfirmed. But he used to go by the name JD2020 back on the World at War forums and whatnot. If you look closely at this board here, you can see pictures of locations that later would be used as zombie maps in the future. Now, some of these locations were actually intended for another DLC that never came to World at War, and the maps would be changed before their release in Black Ops. But it's still cool to see that even all the way back then, there were plans for what the future would hold for these zombie maps. Also, if you look in the 
distance back here, you can see another hanging man over here, though you can't knock this one down. On the rooftops of the main area, just in the little outer section, you can see help and SOS written in sandbags. And the clock here is of course set to 115 or 115. And now we get to Black Ops 1. On the level of Rakuda, when the player drives a motorcycle while armed with a Model 1887 and also flip cocks it in one hand, it's very reminiscent from the scene in Terminator 2 Judgment Day, which is probably a reference here. On the Pentagon level, when talking to Kennedy, you can see the time in Moscow is 115 or 115. On SOG, the song Fortunate Son by Credence Clearwater Revival plays, which is played during one of the Vietnam helicopter scenes in Forrest Gump. Fun fact, this level is set in 1968, and the song actually didn't come out until 1969. On numbers, you can get the Thunder Gun by picking up a tape at the beginning and inserting the tape into a tape player later in the level. The execution scene from Project Nova, where Kravchenko shoots surrendering Germans and then runs out of ammo, is a reference to the 2002 movie The Pianist. Crash Site has the whole boat scene that is a reference to Apocalypse Now, and the achievement Never Get Off the Boat is also a line from that movie. On Payback, in the room with Steiner's location, there's a picture of Dragovich, Kravchenko, Steiner, Petrenko, and Reznov all during the mission Project Nova. On the last level of the campaign, you can also find this NPC called Sergeant Pepper, which is a reference to that Beatles album. Also, if you look at Frank Wood's overall appearance, it's very likely that this character was heavily inspired by Charlie Sheen's character in the movie Platoon. On the Hazard map, which is a remake of Cliffside from Call of Duty World at War, but now it's a golf course, if you go into the practice range room, there is a clock that is accurate to whatever time is on your system, and the room here also has a picture of the pool in the DLC level hotel. Also on this level, by the maintenance garage door, there are two bags of cement labeled product of Treyarch. Then outside of the map, there's a swimming pool over here and you can see a candy bar just like floating in the water, which could be a reference to a scene in the movie Caddyshack. Also, apparently if you are paying really close attention at random times, a gopher can be seen rising from the ground and then disappearing on this map, which could also be a reference to the movie Caddyshack. On the level firing range, if you look at the ammo here, you can see Tank Dempsey's name on it. Also, there's signs in firing range to bring beer, just in case you needed to know. And if you go into spectate mode and fly over to the water tower and look into the center, you can see a grunt from Halo. If you look at this sign, Out of Bounds, it's a reference to Mike Curran, who worked as a character artist on Call of Duty Black Ops. Over in this building, up in the rafters, you can see a hidden teddy bear. Also, there's some Pack-a-Punch Please Wait signs scattered around the map. There's some fans who think that on radiation, if you look out of bounds here, you can see the Modern Warfare 2 level Rust. I don't know if it's one-to-one, -one, but it is interesting that people think that this is Rust. I'm not convinced, but maybe I will be. On the level Villa, you can actually see cans that have Treyarch's name on it. On the level Berlin Wall, there's a store named Wagner, which is a famous German music composer. On the multiplayer level Kowloon, if the player watches one of the TVs for several seconds, a five in a circle will appear on the screen. And then if you look closer, you'll notice that the dial on the television is on the number 11, which could be a reference to element 115, or just the number 115 again. On the multiplayer level Discovery, there's multiple signs warning people to watch their step with the word Doomkopf which is apparently German for stupid head. On the multiplayer level Zoo, one of the posters depicts an actual Soviet poster from the 1920s dedicated to the first Russian animal trainer, Nikolai Pavlik Gladilshevkov. In the motel reception area, there are magazines with images of Cosmic Silverback, which are the characters from the Dead Ops arcade. And they're just here on the cover of the magazines with images of the launch rocket with them. If you look at the building on the top right of this map, there's a cargo train transport board showing the names of all the maps in the game, including the first strike and escalation packs. There's other interesting things you can find across the multiplayer, like there are some of these wanted posters all over multiple maps for a boy named Raphael Angelini. He was age 14, wanted for poning noobs and being awesome, and he's a very good Call of Duty player. This allegedly is a tribute to a young fan who was diagnosed with leukemia and visited Treyarch Studios with his family during the development of the DLC for Black Ops. On the level hotel, if a player shoots one of the slot machines, it'll steal money out of it. Also, the room with the clocks is a reference to the office in Tony Montana's mansion in the movie Scarface. Over on the level Hangar 18, the player can see three alien carcasses covered with blankets, which also have hands with four fingers and blue feet with four toes sticking out from the blankets. Also, these bodies have a tag on them
them that read government property. Then over on the level drive-in, there's this arcade section and we see a really cool reference to Call of Duty World at War with a game called Uber Shooter that has this MP40 joystick. Okay, but Black Ops 1 obviously had a ton of things going on when it came to zombies mode as well. A notch there on Toten's remake, the original zombies map, rebate in Black Ops 1, you can get a secret song by shooting all of the explosive barrels outside and it's like a nice guitar riff for a while. On Kino Der Toten, if you run around the map and you find three element 115 rocks, you can activate the song 115, which is a banger. Also, when you're teleporting up to the film room to access the Pack-a-Punch machine, sometimes you'll be teleported into Samantha's room, one of the characters from the zombie universe. It's this whole arc. But you can grab a film reel and then play it on the giant screen monitor next time you go up into the room. Over on the zombies map 5, if you activate the three red phones, the Eminem song Won't Back Down will play featuring Pink. Also on this zombies map, on the wall next to the MPL, there's a picture of Major John Plaster, who provided work for Call of Duty Black Ops. There's a crazy series of Easter eggs that was only discovered about five or six months ago at the time of recording this. The dates all the way back to Black Ops 1, which is really wild to think about. But on the zombies level 5, and possibly also in the Pentagon level, there is a document that has some text on it. And because resolution in the older Call of Duties wasn't that great, it was rather hard to understand what it said, and I don't think too many people looked into it. However, this document was brought back later on in a DLC for Call of Duty Black Ops 3, used once again as just a decorative piece, but it actually has a bigger ties into the larger zombie universe and also the Black Ops universe. It ended up going into some stuff with the terminals, and then also, more interestingly enough, on Kino Der Toten, there's like a series of letters on the ground, and nobody really thought to look into it as much, or maybe some people did, but never made a full connection. But some of the letters spell out Manhattan Down, which could be a reference to the Manhattan Project, which is, of course, the nuclear bomb project, which ties back to Nuketown. From the looks of it, there's probably some more information specifically about this Easter egg, and there's unsolved things still regarding what the references here are and what they mean, but it looks like all the way back in Black Ops 1, this document might have been teasing that Nuketown would be brought back as a zombies map in the future, which it was in Black Ops 2, but maybe nobody actually caught that Easter egg back then. But this document specifically talks about White Sands Proving Ground Command Center, which is another reference to the Manhattan Project. It talks about New Mexico and the Sandia AEC facility. Then we can look at Ascension from Call of Duty Black Ops 1, and Ascension was really special because this was the first zombies map to really introduce an overarching easter egg that serves more as a mission or quest rather than just like some optional secrets. We're not going to go too deep into every step in the whole lore of zombies because there's so many videos out there of people doing that already, but we will talk about all of the individual easter eggs and the little details hidden along the way as well. But yeah, Ascension was a big deal. There was a whole easter egg associated with destroying the rocket. You had to do all sorts of stuff. You had to like restore some mechanism and all four players needed to have wonder weapons, but ultimately if you pulled off the whole easter egg you got a bigger look into the story and every player would get a death machine for 90 seconds which is pretty cool. As with the other zombies maps there is a secret song hidden away which is Abracadaver by Elena Segman where you can activate the song by finding the three bears with sickles hidden on this map. There's also several different radios that play secret messages hidden in Ascension and other zombie maps across the universe of zombies. They usually go deeper into the story, and since they're featured so prominently, we're not going to mention them every single time we talk about a zombies map, but just know these are staples in the zombies series. On the loading screen of this level, the original one, you can actually see in the shadows of the rockets that are here, the number 115 made out. There's also these Russian dolls of the original zombies characters scattered about for an easter egg. On the next zombies map, Call of the Dead, there was actually another main easter egg that could split two ways, whether you're playing solo or co-op and was pretty involved. You had to like turn some dials and press buttons and climb up one way or another. The original zombies characters were like locked in this room, I think also. There are also three parts of a meteorite hidden across this map that if you activate all three parts, it will activate an Avenged Sevenfold song, Not Ready to Die. And also hidden on this map, you can find an Avenged Sevenfold poster. After this map, Shangri-La would be the next zombies map that would release and have this long Easter egg involving like an eclipse 
jumps and activating different buttons and running around pressing stuff. But at the beginning of the zombies level, if a player stands in a certain spot of the starting room and puts up, up, down, A on their controller, the monkeys in the starting room apparently explode. It only works in the Black Ops version of the map though. Just like with the other maps in Black Ops Zombies, there are secret meteorite pieces hidden around this map that will play another song called Paradolia. And then of course, there was the zombies map Moon, which was one of the biggest and most challenging zombie maps to come out at its time. This Easter egg was crazy. You had to do so many steps and essentially long story short, if you do all of the steps in the Easter egg, there's this big thing where you shoot rockets at earth and it's like, 115 and I don't know there's like two separate easter eggs and you have to do them both one of them gives you 90 seconds with the death machine and the other gives all players all perks which is pretty cool too and then of course the achievement associated with completing the easter egg once again this map had a secret song this time it was called coming home and also on the moon there's two secret discs with retro remixes of other zombie songs like 8-bit sounding remixes. In the first level of Black Ops 2's campaign, where you find woods, you look at the blood, oh look, it's that blood stain that apparently looks like the Grim Reaper from World at War. Apparently, I still don't see it, but it's funny it's back again. On the next level, Solarium, after clearing out a wave of enemies, you can actually see Thor's hammer stuck in the ground over here. On the campaign level, Odysseus, you can actually find a little sticky note referencing that zombies are coming. During the secret ending of Black Ops 2, when we have this amazing performance, here. When you get around the five minute mark of the song, you can actually see zombies in the rafters on the left side of the screen. On the level Nuketown, there's a cool retro games easter egg that happens if you shoot all the mannequin heads right away at the beginning of the game starting. On the shelf over here, you can actually see mini figures of the old Nuketown sign and mannequins. And on the outside of the map, you can see flags for the Spetsnaz and Black Ops, which are the call signs referring to the factions in the original Call of Duty Black Ops. Over on Hijacked, upstairs at the bottom, end of the map, there's a book that says Edward Richtofen, which are like the books scattered all over Black Ops 1. On the map Express, there are posters in the tunnel for movies called Hijacked, Meltdown, and Yemen, all referring to other maps in Black Ops 2. In the map Cove, if the player looks from the beach out in the distance, you can see the boat from the map Hijacked. On the multiplayer map Cargo, most of the containers on the map say 3 Arc, a reference to Treyarch. On the map Hijacked, on both sides of the boat, you can actually see Von Boyage spelled like this, likely a reference to David Vonderhaar. On the multiplayer map Meltdown, there's some donuts here that are a reference to the Simpsons because of where Homer works at like a nuclear factory and here we are. On the map Plaza, one of the jewelry stores is named Dales, which is a reference to the real life jewelry store Zales. Also, the song on this map is Skrillex, I'ma Try It Out featuring Alvin Risk. In some of the stores, there are brochure racks which contain a brochure to the Oasis Resort, a map that was a down downloadable content map for Modern Warfare 3. When playing on the map Raid, you can actually see the map Aftermath in the distance from the pool area, yet on the other way around, when you're playing on Aftermath, you can't see the Raid Mansion. On the level Standoff, there's a building in the map that has a clock in it, and the players find the clock, the small hand is on the 9, the second counter on the 3, and the big hand on the 5, referencing Group 935 from Zombies Mode. Over on Turbine, there are some whiteboards in the control room with post-it notes on it. They read zombies are coming, milk and diapers, which is possibly a shopping list, save the whales, recycle, and then this one also has like fixed turbines on it, but it's written and like scratched out. There's some interesting books here also, Frankenstein, Grimm's Fairy Tales, and Jungle Book to name a few. Also going back to Nuketown, there are two more mailboxes outside of the map under the Nuketown sign, and they're a little bit blurry, but when you zoom into them with a sniper scope, they read Mason Firth and Hoggett, the last names of developers over at Treyarch. On Grind, there are multiple signs around the map that say Vert Games, a possible reference to the X Games, which are an extreme sports competition held in California. On the map Downhill, there is a hat on the snowman that can be moved. On Mirage, in the room with the bar, club solar beverage coasters are used from the campaign club, even though this is technically a different club. On the map Studio, in the interior of the large trailer, several weapon props can be seen. This includes like dual wield ray guns and vector K-10s, along with the ray gun Mark II. The level also makes a reference to Godzilla with this miniature city section of the map and large four-toed footprints on the road. Over on Encore, there's many famous London landmarks that can be seen in the background out of bounds.
sounds of this map. The drums found backstage will make noises if they're knifed or shot. Also going back to Cove, there's some interesting castaway references here too, like a rock showing how many days a person's been on the island. There's this makeshift raft. Help is spelled out here with coconuts. Over on Rush, in the paintball shop, you can see magazines with pictures of Grind, Downhill, and Raid on the cover. And then on the multiplayer map Detour, you can see multiple New York sites in the distance, like the Brooklyn Bridge and the One World Trade Center. But what about zombies? Black Ops 2 took zombies to a whole nother level and things got really, really deep. This is kind of where the big fork starts to happen in zombies, where the lines are blurred between Easter eggs and objectives and then little like secret nods and intentional clues. We're mostly focusing on the little secrets here, but we'll still mention all of the major Easter eggs of the zombie maps moving forward. On transit in the tunnel, there's a green highway sign hanging from the roof with all but a few letters blacked out. The remaining letters spell day X by two me, which could mean day crosses over to me. In the diner area, the signs letters that are still lit spell now die and on for you. Holding down the action button on three different teddy bears that are hidden around the map will activate the song carry on. And then of course the main Easter egg was the Tower of Babel Easter egg. Babel? Babel? I don't know. My zombie lore knowledge is limited at best, but it's just a long quest line. There's a ton of different things you get to do in it. And then at the end, you can choose to complete it in Maxis or Richtofen's favor. Also, if you run through the fields here, you can find the original house from the first zombies map in World at War. It's kind of hidden away, tucked back here for some reason. In Black Ops 2 Nuketown Zombies, there's an Easter egg involving one of the characters from the zombies level Transit, speaking hidden away in the bunker here. Also, after surviving quite a few rounds on Black Ops 2 Nuketown Zombies, eventually there will be like a struggle for power and Richtofen will take over the zombies, as this map is taking place at the same time as the moon Easter egg from Black Ops 1. Over on Die Rise, there was another lengthy Easter egg similar to the main one that Transit had, but this time it was called High Maintenance, which also let you choose to complete it in Maxis or Richtofen's favor again. Die Rise had this little secret that messed with a lot of people, hiding PhD Flopper. It's unobtainable, and it would have been really cool to have on this map, but they hid it in a way where players can't get to it, likely just to taunt players, as the verticality of this map would have been awesome for this. And then of course, there's another hidden song, We All Fall Down, which can be activated by finding three teddy bears hidden around this map as well. Moving forward to Mob of the Dead, one of the coolest zombie maps to ever be introduced. At the beginning of the match, if the player stands still and doesn't revive their own character and dies from that time limit, the song Samantha's Lullaby can be heard. If you find the three whiskey bottles hidden around this map, the song Rusty Cage by Johnny Cash will play. And then of course, this map also had its own main Easter egg objective, Pop Goes the Weasel, which essentially had the mobsters needing to escape from Alcatraz and crafting parts for an airplane. It's part of the whole deep zombie lore that really starts to get intense at this point. I think a lot of zombie fans looked at this map as one of the big turning points for when zombie went lore deep with their maps. Also, PhD Flopper and Mule Kick can be seen on the docks, but once again are available, set there just to taunt the players. The clock above the cafeteria door is set to 115, referring to element 115. And when the AK-47 gets pack-a-punched, it turns into Reznov's Revenge, referencing the World at War character Victor Reznov and his lust for revenge. Going on to Buried, holding down the action button once finding three teddy bears will activate another song, Always Running, when getting a bullseye on the dartboard over in the saloon with the ballistic knife. This, like, piano back here behind the player just starts to play by itself, and it's a little creepy. If the player goes back through the mansion, you can actually see a ghost playing the piano. You then also have the option to tip the ghost, which is something I've never done before, but hey, then the piano can also be played manually by holding the use button. So there's that. Also inside this ghost mansion, there's several portraits of the real life scientist, Michael Faraday. And then of course, just like with the other maps, this zombies map had its own dedicated Easter egg known as Mind Games. Once again, another one you can choose to complete in Maxis or Richtofen's favor. Then we get to Origins, and boy oh boy, was there a lot going on in this map. Of course, there's a song Easter egg hidden here for finding three green meteorite fragments. The song's called Archangel, but that's not all. There's also three radios that if you hold the action button for three seconds will activate a different song called Shepherd of Fire. If you lay down on the numbered panels from Generator 1 and Generator 5 with them needing power, it'll activate the song Ether. Of course, there's a very long main Easter egg associated with Origins for this map called Little Lost Girl. There's a jump scare that will happen if you have a sniper rifle and you zoom in on this burning church. 
merch. Next, let's go ahead and move on to Black Ops 3, which has a ton of things going on here. On the campaign level hypo center, there's a framed Black Ops 2 Easter egg. It's just Black Ops 2 in a frame. Also, when playing in the campaign, sometimes you'll have these pre-text loading screens where text is like scrolling by, and one of the messages will say Dragovich, Kravchenko, Steiner, these men must die, which is a reference to words spoken by Reznov in Call of Duty Black Ops 1. Also, on some screens with scrolling text in areas like the safe house, for example, the line loading boot restart variables all dot your dot base are belong to us can be found, which is a reference to the game Zero Wing, which had this text in the game, but also spawned into a massive meme. Just like in Black Ops 1, at the start of every level, there is a mission log protocol code. This one is a little bit different, though, from what Black Ops 1 says, where the first letter of each word actually spells out, are we Taylor or we are Taylor, which could be a subtle philosophical question to the ending of the main campaign where we can't figure out if our character has fully merged with Taylor or not. I don't know, Black Ops 3's campaign was very, very deep. <laughs> Maybe a little too deep for its own good sometimes. On the level provocation, Marshawn Lynch, who at the time was known for playing on the Seattle Seahawks, makes a cameo in this level, appearing behind Danny Lee and Hendrix, sitting at the table with 54 I soldiers. The character is not killed and escapes, so that's cool. Also over here, we have a cool, clever reference to the 2015 sci-fi film Chappie. Over on the campaign level Rise and Fall, Samantha's teddy bear can actually be seen at the beginning of this level, right over here by the train. On the campaign level Demon Within, the music that plays during the Battle of Bastogne is actually a remix of the main theme music to Call of Duty 3, another title that Treyarch had developed. The Tiger Tank here has the logo of Group 935 from Zombies once again making a small subtle appearance in the campaign side of things. On the level Lotus, there are several generators around the level, and on their display, it says they generate 1.21 GW of power. That couldn't be 1.21 gigawatts of power, being a reference to the film Back to the Future, could it? If so, that's really clever. Shifting gears to the multiplayer side of things, on the multiplayer map Aquarium, the ship from Hijacked in Call of Duty Black Ops 2 can be seen, sadly, half sunken in the distance. On the multiplayer map Combine, a blueprint for the wave gun from Zombies can be found on this map. On Fringe, there's three posters for some older Call of Duty games here. Call of Duty 3, World at War, and Call of Duty Black Ops. And they're all found in this inaccessible room, which makes it even more of a secretive Easter egg. On the map Infection, it's described as taking place in France in the map description. However, this stone structure right here disagrees. It says it's in Foy, Belgium. This part of the map that acts as this really weird and bizarre wall because we're supposed to be in some like, I don't know, artificial world in a brain or something. This wall, though, is a remake of Call of Duty's famous map, Carentan. There's a sign that says Waffen Fabric Deris. Seriously, guys, I only expect my pronunciation on a lot of these words to just get worse. Luke, pronounce how you say this. Waffenfabrik der Riese. When you translate that from German though, it means Weapons Factory the Giant, which actually links this multiplayer map to the zombies map der Riese. In the hotel near the center, there's also a map of der Riese on the wall. Just kind of making all the connections here. On the map Metro, there's actually some Perksicola drinks here. Over on Stronghold, another photograph of Call of Duty Black Ops 2 can be found in this building, which is just awesome. We're back at Nuketown again, and just like with the last nuke towns. There's mailboxes in front of the houses, but here we have Hendrix and Corvus, referencing the two antagonists of the campaign. Also, if you shoot the heads off the mannequins in nuke town in a quick enough time, they'll come alive and start attacking you, which is terrifying. There was also another version of this where you could shoot the arms off and you get this creepy Easter egg instead. And there was a change to nuke town for a little while that added UFOs to it, which was also something kind of unexpected. On the multiplayer map Gauntlet, over in the urban area, there's two movie posters from Shadows of Evil, which are Call of Misery and Killers of the Night. Shadows of Evil is the zombies mode that we'll talk about a little bit later. Also, you can see something else from the zombies mode in Black Ops 3, where these labels read DeLuca Shipping Co. Established 1849, which is a reference to Sal DeLuca, who's in Shadows of Evil. On Splash, if you look in the far distance, once again, you can see the ship from Hijacked, as well as the ship from the zombies map Shadows of Evil. Also, on this map, near the 
the security station, you can find a Dr. Monty's chocolate bar lying on the computer desk. And this chocolate bar obviously being an inspiration from Dr. Monty's like candy chain or whatever he has in zombies mode for Black Ops 3. But these chocolate bars show up all over the place in Black Ops 3 beyond just this one moment. On the entrance to Atlantis Riptide, there's four statues of the Primus characters. There's also this other statue of Richtofen over by this fountain, which is located outside of the map. On the map Knockout, there's a teddy bear that's found inside of this drawer. Also, there's this cool disco room on this map, and the song Disco of the Dead from the Zombies map plays here. You can see the outfit from Kill Bill on display here. On the multiplayer map Rumble, if you go to the Hall of Fame room, you can hear another Zombies song from Black Ops 2 playing through the speaker. On the multiplayer map Micro, the one where you're supposed to be like really small in this like big area, you can see Dr. Monty's cream soda, and it actually says there's nothing in this beverage that's any good for you, so you might as well not drink it. It's like good advertising technique, if you ask me. There's also some pretty clever little jokes on some of the ingredients and nutritional facts on various things you can see on this level, but it is also noting that the pizza boxes have a warning that they are definitely not eco-friendly. On the map Spire, there's these display boards that have various flights on them, which all seem to have been canceled, but what's interesting is some of the flights were to Nowhere and El Dorado. Also, there's a juice menu here, and some of the juice names are interesting. Like, for instance, you can get the Surely It Can't Get More Juicy drink, or the Yes It Gets More Juicy drink. Over on the multiplayer map Berserk, there's just two flying dragons vibing out out there. On Citadel, there's a large snake which can be seen swimming. You can't kill it, but it is harmless, but still, I don't know why there's a giant snake in here. Also on this map, certain trees around the area seem to have these creepy faces in them and they actually move. Apparently you can even hear some deep ghostly voice sounds. This is what we heard. Over on the map Outlaw, there's actually a ton of tiny references to Back to the Future, like what time is on the clock, and a flux capacitor. Let's go into Black Ops 3's Zombies mode, starting with Shadows of Evil, which had its main Easter egg called Apocalypse Averted, where apparently we had to go attempt to resolve the crimes of the main characters, and there's like this mysterious man in the shadows, and there's like interdimensional evil, and a bunch of references to like Lovecraftian lore. There's other interesting little secrets though hidden away besides the main easter egg. Like in the mystery box, there's a face hugger inside the right slime ball thing, a reference to the alien movies. There's a jump scare on this map also where if you have a sniper rifle and you look at these buildings over here near the docks, just boom, here you go. There's a new song called Snakeskin Boots and it can be activated by finding three wooden radios around the map. And then there's also another song Cold Hard Cash that can be activated by finding three parts of a microphone and interacting with the stage. This map can also be turned into black and white by shooting a picture frame behind the boxing ring and then interacting with it. Over in the subway, you can see a map of Alcatraz from Mob of the Dead. You can also find a map of the excavation site from Origins over on the table next to the rift door in the waterfront district. Apparently there's also a stuffed monkey here. If you shoot the shadow man in the beginning of the match, players are able to skip ahead in the game, either going straight to round five all the way up to round 15, but it can only be done on solo, private or local matches, so I guess you can't do it with your buddies online. The Ruby Rabbit Lounge is the name of this lounge over here, but it's likely a reference to the club from Who Framed Roger Rabbit, where Jessica Rabbit danced in that movie. Over by the Waterfront District, if you look at the end of the dock, you can actually see this light post where there's a green light. It's likely a reference to The Great Gatsby. And then over in the boxing gym, these pictures here are likely Treyarch developers. Next, let's look at Der Eisendrach. This time around, there's an entire East Easter egg quest line for the achievement My Brother's Keeper, where the Primus group assaults the Group 935 facility in Austria. There's some cool Easter eggs hidden on this one as well though, like shooting three skulls with the in plain sight gobble gun activated will actually turn all the zombies into skeletons, and uh, that's neat. There's of course the stereotypical Easter eggs you would find on any map, like hidden music, and then obviously the long quest line, and this map always just looked really cool. On Zetsubu no Shima, this one has its own 
own storyline quest line called Seeds of Doubt, but there are some other hidden things like a musical Easter egg that can be activated by filling these melody bulbs near the purple water. Also, near this green water, there's apparently a strange creature that can be seen walking in the distance, but only after you reach round 50. Also, if you use a scoped rifle and aim at the test tubes in the bunker, a player can actually get a jump scare in a really odd and creepy way where a doppelganger of one of the four characters will be standing there and then boom, jump scare. Then we look to Gorod Covey where there's another Easter egg plot line quest line. It's based around Nikolai and like securing his soul within the Battle of Stalingrad or something. But on this map, there's three musical Easter eggs with four different possible ways of activating them. The first one is Dead Ended. You just have to find three vodka bottles, which sounds fitting for Nikolai. There's a re-recorded version of Ace of Spades by Motorhead. You just have to find three literal Ace of Spades cards around the map. This one could also be activated during the boss fight by shooting three telephone poles. Then there's also a hide and seek game that you can play. We have to throw monkey bombs into different areas and set them on fire by the dragons. This one's a little more convoluted than the rest of the songs, but if you do it and you go through the process of it, you unlock Samantha's Sorrow to play. Also in the spawn area of this map, there's a street sign here named Richard Rodriguez. If you ever wonder why that's there, this was actually the name of the winner of the Call of Duty Black Ops 3 Be a Zombie contest, which was held between Activision and Treyarch in collaboration with Omaze. Hey, the dude won and got his name in the game. What more could he ask for? Okay, then on Revelations, there's two Easter eggs. One of them is the For the Good of All, which involves opening the summoning key and completing the cycle. But also, if you've done all the previous Easter eggs, you get another quest for something called A Better Tomorrow. It's really cool how deep the Easter eggs go here, but for brevity, we just don't want to spend all of our time on this video just going into every nitty gritty step of every zombies map. Maybe a future video though. But hey, you find three teddy bears and you can activate a song called The Gift. And that's great for like simple minded zombie players like me. Also, you may or may not have noticed on Revelations, there's some references to the older zombies maps in each location. Like a little bit of this, a little bit of that. I don't know if I'm the only person to ever notice this. After Revelations, we later would see the release of Zombie Chronicles, which brought back a ton of classic zombie maps from World at War, Black Ops 1, and Black Ops 2. A lot of these added a couple of new Easter eggs that weren't in the original versions of the game. Like on Verruckt, if you throw an explosive at the statue in the middle of the courtyard, it'll start throwing up blood. They also updated the song Easter egg into this longer Easter egg that involves flushing multiple toilets, and then you do this hide and seek game with Samantha where you have to shoot these dolls. That actually becomes a trend in a lot of the zombie chronicles maps with the hide and seek doll game. Like on the original zombies map, Knock Down Toten, there's now four hidden buttons that you activate and then you play some more hide and seek with dolls, but you get another song here. Moon also has a hide and seek doll hunt for another secret song, but they added this whole other Easter egg that was a better bonus where you can go and do all these little tasks for a dog, even collect zombie souls for dog bowls, and eventually you can spawn in a space dog, which is pretty cool. There's also a hide and seek Easter egg for music on a Ascension, but it's a little bit harder to activate than some of the other ones. You have to throw a Gersh device near a Samantha doll to activate it, and then you do the whole hide and seek Easter egg. But also on Ascension, there's this really creepy Easter egg where you can see the Shadow Man way in the distance in the tower just watching. I don't know why this one is just like, hey, what's going on? Okay, then Shinonuma also has new music and a Samantha doll Easter egg as well. For Origins, you can also get a hidden song if you find the three green element 115s and you get the song Art. Angel. You also can find three red radios for the song Shepherd of Fire. Also on Origins, when you're doing the whole thing to build the four staffs, there is another Easter egg that ultimately has you playing hide and seek with those dolls again to get another music Easter egg. And there's papers with staff names written on them in the craters of Origins as well. I think that's pretty cool. Okay, now let's go ahead and look at Call of Duty Black Ops 4. Now one thing that's interesting about Black Ops 4 is this time around, we actually don't have a campaign. We got the first ever Battle Royale Royale mode known as Blackout, and it was apparently developed in just nine months. And it seemed like the full campaign team had to scrap the campaign and pivot over to working on this project. Probably a colossal effort, but even with that being said, a lot of the biggest references and secrets on Blackout are mostly just locations that were brought back and expanded upon from previous Black Ops titles. But there was a couple of things hidden away in Blackout that were worth looking at. Like for instance, Nuketown was now Nuketown Island which was a lot bigger than before. And there was this connected underground bunker situation going on, which was really cool. There were some iconic locations
locations like Raid and the Firing Range and Asylum from World at War and Zombies and the secret toilet flushing thing still works here, which was awesome. Later on, they would bring Hijacked, which was hijacked exactly pretty much. Okay, and then while we were trying to find some other Easter eggs on this, we had some jerk on our team trying to make it difficult for us to travel. Like, why, dude? <laughs> while we were exploring, though, we did find some other interesting locations like Standoff. There was the diner from Transit over here. And also this section, I think, is Cargo from Black Ops 2, right? There also was the Blightfather boss fight, which would happen every now and again over by the Asylum near the graveyard. Blackout also had a ton of references to 115, like we're over at the factory, the days since the last incident was 115. But still, I think the coolest area definitely was Nuketown, like going through those underground areas were cool. The radio under here will actually play music from the Black Ops 2 map Transit. Also under Nuketown, there's this Wolf King painting, which is a reference to Der Eisendrock, as the whole Easter egg involves like the King Wolf. Back on that asylum, there's a teddy bear up here, which is a cool nod to zombies. And there's a few secret audio messages tied to the challenges found in the Blackout game itself for doing things like unlocking characters and those are cool too but a little bit of a weird way to unlock characters okay over on the multiplayer side of things the multiplayer map contraband has a reference to the movie castaway and it can be seen in the bed in this like wood cabin thing we see a soccer ball with a bloody handprint on it and we all know immediately that it's our boy wilson all these years later there's also some chalk drawn messages scattered around the map that kind of have this weird and odd backstory associated with it i don't know i always thought that these things were kind of spooky on hacienda there's an anchored corpse actually in the water area near the end of the map. There's also a duck floating near this boathouse, so you know we have equal stakes here. There's also these little pads that you can interact with, and it'll end up activating the center fountain water show and a rotating car display and the secret safe room. Kind of cool to see the little interaction with stuff here. Beneath the torture and vault room, there is actually a habitat for a chained tiger, and it can be seen roaming around down here, but you can't like shoot it or kill it or anything. Outside of the map, in the backyard you can also see a peacock and it also walks around and is invincible you can see caesar and leda and these statues here and there's pictures of other maps from call of duty history like hijacked for example and once again there's some more photos of possibly developers on the wall here if you look through the window on this level you can also see a bat with barbed wire wrapped around it maybe a reference to negan from the walking dead kind of a clever little nod hidden away in here on the multiplayer map morocco we found dr Monty's candy bar here. And of course, once again, this pops up all over the place throughout the later Black Ops games. On the multiplayer map Gridlock, you can actually see a poster referencing Super Sentai. And then obviously over here, we have this giant Godzilla poster, which is pretty awesome. Also on the multiplayer map Arsenal, we see a bunch of pictures here and it's likely that these are developers or photos of family members that developers wanted to include in this map. Look at Nuketown. This time it was a Russian Nuketown and it had snow but once again if you shot the heads off the mannequins at the beginning of the game a rocket would come up and then we would get the zombie mannequin mode that was terrifying again later on in the multiplayer map casino there's literally a slot machine called pack-a-punch and they even have a hallway featuring a mural of the blackout map of all locations and then black ops 4 did something interesting they did a zombies inspired multiplayer map based on dare eisenrad there's a lot of easter eggs and references to zombies all over the place besides the fact you can even hear the Primus characters through the radio by the gondola control panel. You have sharp eyes, Richtofen. Keep them open. There's zombies around the map. There's a teddy bear that can be seen knocking behind the window of this toy store, which is terrifying. There's also a giant robot body similar to the giant robot stuff from zombies. It's just kind of cool all of the little nods here for something that's not a zombies centric map. Over on Remnant, several zombies can be seen here as well in different parts of the map and you can actually kill them. There's also an interactable audio tour that the player can listen to in the museum area. You can even see an alligator in the water back here swimming in the distance. And there's a big reference to the Primus characters over here on this mural. Okay, then the 
multiplayer map lair has some interesting things. There's a shark that will swim in the water areas for a little while. Some of these signs actually have pretty funny descriptors to them. And you can actually see the shadow of the, what we're guessing is Arcadius boss with a monkey over here in the control room. Okay, let's look at some of the zombies maps that were in Black Ops 4 and just kind of pick out the main things that were interesting. I know not too many people were fans of the chaos maps that introduced nine, for example, which was like kind of an out there idea, but I think the gameplay was fun enough, just maybe not the story around it. Voyage of Despair was interesting. This one was on obviously an abandoned Titanic ship, and there's like this whole Easter egg quest line where you have to cleanse the Sentinel artifact, but this one was also non-canon. Then there was Blood of the Dead, which was a Mob of the Dead remake, where you have the Primus crew this time trying to escape Alcatraz through that Easter egg. There was also a song Easter egg for Where Are We Going, and you have to use a spectral shield to blast the input numbers 115. There was the map Classified, which is a remake of 5 from the original Call of Duty Black Ops Zombies, and there was a hidden song in here called Shockwave, which could be activated by finding three bottles of vodka hidden around the map. Also, a little interesting thing here is, as this map was canon and part of the main zombies timeline, there was this blacked out portrait of Primus Nikolai, and now his face will appear after knifing all of the crooked presidential portraits in the offices. This also causes the Richtofen portrait to fade to black. Then we had another main zombie line storyline called the Dead of Night, and there was a main quest line once again with this one, which was called Trial by Ordeal. And you had to do like three different quest lines and you have to try to escape the mansion. But there are some cool things they hid in here, like in the billiards room, you can shoot some pool walls here. If you do it in order from one to nine, you get 500 points. But if you do it onto the left side of the pool table, a bookcase will open up and reveal an SG-12 sword flay elixir or a random power up. There's also an Easter egg in the wine cellar room where there's these barrels that are dripping wine at different speeds. And if you go in order, hitting them from fastest to slowest, a cabinet will move out of the way and give the player either silver bullets or 500 points. Okay, then there's ancient evil and there's an Easter egg here as well. And what is going on here? There's this character named Perseus. He was in that nine map we talked about earlier. He's apparently the son of Zeus. He shows up at one point. He's angry. I don't ever understand what's going on with the chaos zombies Easter eggs. Then there was Alpha Omega, and this was a big Easter egg as once again, we're at the Nuketown location for another Black Ops game. But this Easter egg is interesting because it has the Primus and Ultimus teams working together to enact the plan of Primus Nikolai. There's an Easter egg song hidden here called I Am The Well. You have to find three atom heads in different parts of the map. If you shoot off all of the atom heads around the map, it'll actually cause the next round to consist only of atoms. And if you survive that, the player will be given a free perk. And then if you knife all of the atom heads around the map with the Galva Knuckles, there will be another atom that spawns next to the Packet Punch Machine. And if you aim at it, it'll give you a jump scare of the atom head great. There's also another atom just kind of located in the desert way back here behind the greenhouse. And if you aim at this one with the sniper rifle, you get another jump scare. All right, next up, Tag Der Toten. This time around, we're following the Victus crew. They have to assemble an Agarthan device, you know, just to solve the paradox of the multiverse and resolve the duality between the Keepers and the Apothecons. Simple Easter egg to explain. Besides the main story Easter eggs, there are some other little ones that are cool too. There's an Easter egg for a secret instrumental song titled A Light From The Shore. You can activate this one by interacting with three weapons that are references and featured in the original map that this map's based on. There are two different jump scares that'll get you here. One that'll trigger at the forecastle when looking at this paper. And there's also the hermit jump scare when looking at the light of the lighthouse with a sniper scope. There's a cool Easter egg here at the lighthouse station where you can interact with a pair of glasses and players will be given 500 points. But these glasses are a tribute to George A. Romero, who was the director and the, essentially the creator of the original modern day zombies in the way that we see them. He did the original Night of the Living Dead, Dawn of the Dead, Day of the Dead, Another Night of the Living Dead, Land of the Dead, Diary of the Dead, Survival of the Dead, OJ Simpson, Juice on the Loose, and of course, he was featured extensively in Call of Duty, Call of the Dead. He sadly passed away in 2017, so it was nice to see an homage to this famous director. Also, if players go 
go to this outer walkway, there's a secret area that can be accessed by crouching and approaching the left corner of the flinger. You'll then get flung literally to this area where you have to use a heat pack because you have to swim such a far away. And when you reach the other side, the secret area has apparently Mars in the background and the loading screen music for this area has Shangri-La's music. Apparently this is a reference to the fact that back in the Shangri-La days, fans thought that this map was connected to Mars one way or another. So they're just kind of tying it all together here. Also on this map, if a player is froze 10 times, a button will appear in the spawn area near a chunk of ice. And then when you press it, all the players will be locked into the spawn area and Samantha will say, don't freeze. Then players can continue their current round, but will slowly freeze if they don't sprint. When the round ends though, the game will jump 200 rounds forward. This Easter egg was not even discovered until like four months after this map came out and Treyarch kind of tweeted a hint to it. And two weeks later, someone finally found this, but yeah, wow. But with all of Black Ops 1, 2, 3, and 4 and World of War done, we have one game left to look at, Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, which had quite a bit of interesting nods and Easter eggs hidden throughout the story and multiplayer and zombies. On the very first level of the camp, Pain. The intro mission and opening shot starts with the flame of a lighter, which is an homage to the first Call of Duty Black Ops game that opens up the very same way. A little later, there's a campaign level called Operation Fracture Jaw, which is a reference to the real world top secret US military contingency plan that was essentially the plan to move nuclear weapons into South Vietnam so that they could use nukes at short notice against North Vietnamese troops. This plan allegedly though was abandoned very shortly after the concept phase started, probably for the better. On the campaign level, red light, green light, if the player pushes the button on the right side of this Bubby statue, which is by the big old good old Burger Town, it'll eject an M79. Frank, you're gonna love my feet inside you! But also, Burger Town's here, which in itself is a reference to something that's been in Call of Duty for a long time. Burger Town did show up in Modern Warfare 2019 and Warzone, but its first appearance was actually all the way back in the original Modern Warfare 2. And if I'm understanding this correctly, this is the first time a Treyarch-led game had Burger Town in it, though Raven Software was the one that really worked on the campaign here, so it is interesting to see Burger Town nonetheless. Also, on this level alone, there's a lot of little interesting, neat details. There's this cool art arcade with a lot of games that are even playable, some from Activision's old library of very old games, which is really cool. And yeah, the games are playable, which is an even cooler bonus, but the little other details also appeared in the multiplayer map America. So we'll talk about those when we go through the multiplayer map. On the campaign level, Echoes of a Cold War, Mason has the ability to unlock this one locker and inside the locker, there's a picture of Steiner from Black Ops 1. And this will cause Mason to see the numbers again. Also. When you leave the control room, if you look to the left, you can see that catwalk that was blown up from Black Ops 1's campaign. On the campaign level, Desperate Measures, Gorbachev says, we are in grave danger from the capitalists, our collective, our very way of life is at risk, which is not only a very clever homage to the dialogue that JFK gives to Alex Mason in Black Ops 1, but also an interesting narrative parallel being developed here as well. Also an obvious one, but still a cool one. It's worth noting that in Call of Duty Black Ops, Zakayev may makes an appearance. It's brief, but it's really notable because this was a major character in the original Modern Warfare trilogy. And while this version of the character is not the same one from the original Modern Warfare trilogy, it is worth noting the character does show up kind of in Modern Warfare 2019 towards the end briefly, and his son is mentioned as well, which could mean that the Black Ops timeline also was absorbing the rebooted Modern Warfare timeline. Uh, we will have to wait to see more story elements come out later on, but it is interesting nonetheless. When you're in the safe house, one of the computers actually will operate the same way, similarly to what the Black Ops 1 computer would do, allowing you to even play some of the same things or read through files like you could in the original Black Ops 1. On the campaign level, Breakthrough, there's a lot of alternate routes that can occur, and we don't know if these actually count as Easter eggs or just very interesting moments for a campaign. But yeah, one of the options, if you go the right way, can have you fighting off against zombies or even fighting off against Adler clones. It just depends on which route you take 
on this level. Over on the multiplayer side of things, there are a ton of little references hidden throughout the game. Nuketown, of course, if you go and shoot all of the heads right away, it'll activate a green vision type mode that's supposed to be retro inspired, and it's interesting. Maybe it's not as cool as some of the other ones that have existed, but it's still kind of neat. On the multiplayer map, Miami, if you look at these posters of fish back here, you can see a little poster for Big Tony the fish, which I don't really understand what that is, but I kind of like it. On the multiplayer map, Moscow, this clock here in Moscow is set to 115 or 115 p.m. Another reference to 115. On the multiplayer map, Cartel, Menendez, the main antagonist from Black Ops 2, has a ton of references all over the map. But did you know there's also a little picture over here hanging up of Nuketown randomly? Okay, when Luke and I were looking through every single map for this video and detailing all the Easter eggs, trying to make sure we included as much as we could, it was definitely quite the journey. But no map was as fun to look through than the map The Pines. This map is so craftfully designed, we just have to note that like this map is probably one of our top favorite designed maps. There's so many different details, but we'll try to cover as many as we can. Firstly, The Pines itself is a reference and homage to the same mall from the Back to the Future movie. You can see the similarities in the logo design. Even more so though, the coordinates that are given for this mall actually are coordinates of a real world mall in New Jersey. Though I don't think there's any visual similarities other than the locations themselves, but still it's interesting that they picked to make sure that the coordinates lined up with a real location. There's a record store and in the record store, there's a ton of album artwork that's a lot of times homages to real bands and music that's out there, but there's also a Nuketown band, which is kind of clever. There's also this photography store, and you can see these amazing 80s inspired photos where you can get your picture taken, or at least what your pictures could end up looking like if you decide to get your picture taken. Another thing that was big with Black Ops Cold War, of course, was the Mountain Dew and Doritos sponsorship. And of course, all over the place, there's these retro Mountain Dew and Doritos logos just in various places. We had to put this in somewhere, but this exists beyond just this specific level. It's all over the game. There's a store called Frencers, which is obviously a play on the real store Spencer's. They even sell lava lamps and like disco ball lights and whatnot. They do sell Bubby figures from the Burger Town and Zero, one of the operators from Black Ops 4 as a figure in this store as well. Over in the arcade, there's a lot of arcade machines that are either from the campaign or an Activision game or even an older zombie inspired pinball machine that could make an appearance. But there's also a new one called Super Dead Ops Cold War Pinball and another one called Monkey Bomb Pinball, which both are pretty cool inclusions. We really liked the giant phones in the mobile phone display over here. It just seemed cool. There's an electronic store called Radio House, which is obviously a play on the real store Radio Shack that used to exist. And then near the arcade, there's like a separate little restaurant room area for like a little restaurant shop, or I guess maybe where you would have a birthday party if you were to have one at an arcade. And on the wall, there's a mural, which is inspired by a video game, probably playing a little bit of a parody on The Legend of Zelda. It's kind of clever. Okay, we couldn't 100% figure out what these mean, but out in the parking lot, all of the license plates are very carefully selected. We don't know necessarily what they all mean. They look like some of them are special dates. Maybe there's like a little hidden message in them. But what we think is the developers, maybe a couple of them, each got to pick their own message to put on a license plate. And they did that to, I don't know, make some little callback that only they know about. Also over by the movie theater, there's some funny movie posters. And then just of course, in general, just because this map is very well designed. If you're looking for something interesting to look at, it is fun to just go through the food court and look at all of the menu items and all the little things that are on display. This map is still really cool. On the remake of Drive-In, the original Black Ops map, it's actually mostly the same, except the World at War arcade machines are this time changed slightly, where instead of the MP40 being the weapon on the arcade machine, it's a PPSH, and you can see the World at War main menu when you look at the arcade cabinet instead, which is a nice new touch. On the multiplayer map America, we have Burger Town accessible again here, and and there's a board here advertising birthdays, which is kind of cool. And there's a bunch of pictures of what we assume are developers here. Also, those goofy movie posters are back in this little cinema, so that's great. Game Show was an interesting map for a gunfight map. There's a lot of little things hidden here. It seems like the studio lot is right next to a movie set for Grave Hill, which is the same set of that Black Ops map that we looked at earlier that had a bunch of Back to the Future references in it. Inside of this dressing room, if you break the mirrors, you can actually find 
find some interesting things behind them, like uh, sticky notes or numbers or a window to an interrogation room. What's going on here? Also, does anyone know what this comic book is? We were trying to figure it out, but we could not figure it out for the life of us. Then shifting gears over to zombies, there also were some interesting Easter eggs here as well. During the opening cinematic that went with Dying Machine, the first zombies map of Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, you can see Sam typing in a number and the spelling of the numbers that are dialed actually translates to Maxis. There's this Easter egg that features four zombies dancing with the reward crate on their shoulders, which is a reference to that big meme of the coffin dance. Okay, the obvious one with the Dying Machine map is that, hey, look, it's the original zombie house from Call of Duty World at War, but it looks different. But a little bit after the release of Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War and Die Machine, they actually added in a quest line Easter egg like we've seen since Ascension and Black Ops 1. There's a lot going on in this one, but obviously there are the steps you have to follow, just like with all of the newer zombie maps. I don't know, you have to like help free this dude who's been locked in the area for a long time, but it's pretty cool. There's also, of course, a Easter egg song, which is Alone by Kevin Sherwood, once again, who did most of the zombies music, and it's sung by Clark S. Nova, and it can be activated by interacting with three cassette tapes that are hidden around the map. Also, it's worth noting, if you get a ray gun, sometimes there is a jump scare that'll happen with that, so uh, be prepared for that. Then we can go to Firebase Z, which was the next release for zombie maps. There was, once again, a quest line that you had to go for to get the Easter egg accomplished. This one was called Maxis Potential. It essentially tasks Requiem with rescuing Samantha Maxis from the dark ether. Then, of course, there's another Easter egg song called Lost, which is sung by Samantha's voice actress. Once again, this one can be activated if you find the three cassette tapes hidden around the map. Also, there's this other Easter egg after you've activated all three ether reactors, where if you like stare at this bunny for a while, it'll levitate and then you can go hunting for these bunny rabbits. And if you shoot and find the bunny three times, you can actually get a crate that will contain a bunch of rewards and juggernaut, which is nice. Also, it's worth noting on the map itself, there's an office for Lev Kroshenko. The next map was Maur der Toten with the main quest line called Tin Man Heart. This time, players have to follow Kravchenko's orders and build an inversion warhead to close the dark ether portal in Berlin. Once again, another one of those quests that have a ton of little steps to it. There's also a hidden song called Amoeba by the American group Adolescence, be activated by collecting the three cassette tapes hidden on this map as well. There's also another little bunny rabbit side quest where you have to collect six bunny parts that you can do to get some extra rewards. Then we had the Forsaken map, and this one had another main quest line with the dark ether and Forsaken worlds, and there's time dilation. I don't really know what's going on anymore. Samantha's fighting something also during all of this. Interestingly enough, the words coming soon, Noctera and Toten, can be read on the front sign of the theater in any town, which is a reference to the original zombies map all the way back from Call of Duty World at War. To even add a bonus to this, there is an arcade machine, once again, like we saw earlier, of Call of Duty World at War with the PPSH. And this time you can actually activate the arcade machine and it will take you into the game World at War, not really, but you essentially will be in the original Nocturne Toten house from World at War, and you have to survive three rounds inspired by what the first three rounds typically looked like in a World at War experience. So you have to like knife stuff, shoot stuff, and use an M1 Garand to kill stuff too. It's really cool to see a World at War reference like this all the way later on in Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War that essentially reminds players and takes players all the way back to its roots, bringing things essentially full circle here, which is really amazing. This video was a lot of research, but a lot of fun to do. So if you enjoyed enjoyed this video, please do hit the like button. Make sure you're subscribed with notifications on. If we missed any Easter eggs or you have a favorite Easter egg, let us know in the comments. Uh, we'd like to maybe count up like which Easter egg has the most memories for some players. So let us know in the comments down below. Also, huge shout out to our patrons for making this video possible. If you have a few bucks burning a hole in your pocket, maybe check out our Patreon link in the description down below. That's it for today, though. We'll see you all next time with a brand new video. And that's it.